So we are now proceeding to phase five of this program. And without uh, much ado, I'm going to request uh, um, Miss, uh, yeah, and President that Miss Fundawand. Ms. P. Isaac, uh, the head of content and uh, training at Fundawand. Over to you, Madam. Can you come in, Ms. Hans? Unalanto, Ms. Fuchan. Okay. Tengu Tisha, I like Ms. So I always believe I've got a teacher's voice. Uh, and I'm a foot soldier. If food soldiers must say, need Vuma, ne? So, do you need a Nikki Vuma? So I can give it back to you, ne? Kubi, 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 yo. Siaya, Siaya. Yo, 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 are you a Vuma, le? Tu, eat this acnic. Kubi, 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 yo. Siaya. Nobody's beating us, nobody's shooting us, but we know with new strategies, with new developments, we get criticized. But that's okay, because we know where we're wanting to go. Ne? We know we want all children to be reading with comprehension, calculating for Ufundawandeke, calculating with confidence by the age of 10 by 2030. Yeah, you've okay. Oh, Sanjay. <laughs> All right, so as Ufunda Wande, we have four focus areas. One of them is developing materials, resources in home language. So that is for grade R to grade three, where we develop for currently, we have developed for Risikosa, Afrikaans, and Sibid. We develop materials for pre-service and in-service training and support. Uh, and we test different models. Because what we're trying to do is find out what works. And with what works, we are trying to feed it into the system the lessons that we've learned. And you will see so far what it is that we've learned and how we've been able to give this advice and learnings um, to the education system. Lastly, because we really do believe, as it has been said this whole day, that research is very important. We do responsible research and advocate, not just in Jay, but we actually advocate for what works. Because based on the research that we get, we find the learnings and the lessons, and we share it with the people who will um, make better decisions around it. Okay, so currently we are in three provinces, and we are testing three different models. The model that we're working with in the Eastern Cape is around coaches. We're trying to see what coaches can do, what impact they can make in learning outcomes. Uh, and we're working with 57 schools and we started with it in 2019. That was our first baby. Our second baby was Limpopo. In Limpopo, we have 120 schools where we are testing what does materials together with teaching assistants look like? What impact can that yield for us? And in the Western Cape, we are currently working with 150 schools where, and, and there the model is trying to see what does it look like when subject advisors own the program, um, well, actually when the department owns the program and runs it by themselves. Ne? Uh, and as a result of what we've seen there is that the um, Western Cape is rolling out to 142 all their foundation phase um, schools in African schools and in Isikosa schools. And again, they were trying to learn and see how, what does that look like, what about it works, and how can we feed it back into um, the system. 
So um, again, like they said, we are the partner, and as, a, as partners, we're trying to see how can we support each other. And where we are finding that we're really very aligned or we want to focus on as um, Fundawande is around teacher development, the provision of resources, and the monitoring and evaluation. When we talk teacher development, I think it was mentioned um, earlier on in the morning where um, Mamu Gopman was talking about the advanced certificate and foundation phase literacy, which we've developed in partnership with Rhodes University. There, again, like what I really love about it is that they always say the Eastern Cape are pioneers. So we started this program with the Eastern Cape, where 36 um, HODs were enrolled in it, and the 36 HODs were from our interventions. Because the understanding is that, you know, HODs are run the curriculum completion, and teacher development. So in order for all of this stuff to happen, they need to have the content knowledge so that they can assist teachers in the afternoon sessions, PLCs, etc. cetera. Um, and 21 subject advisors were enrolled and they were paid for by the department. So what's been really great about this is from those learnings, we've had the Western Cape also enroll their subject advisors. We've also had Limbobo enroll their subject advisors into the, the Rhodes course. Net distinctions, younger and busy. So, um, and as a response to um, to COVID, uh, you know, during that time, we all didn't know how long this thing was going to last, and we also didn't know how to help teachers, help learners, because we understood without going to school, nothing was happening in terms of learning, right? So, one of the things that we did was take some of the modules from the Rhodes course and develop an online platform where teachers can actually um, do an online course self-study where they drive themselves. Um, hence the birth of uh, the Reading Academy. And in sharing all these lessons, like remember what I say, we're not doing anything for ourselves. What we do is feedback whatever we're doing to, um, to um, the, the, the provincial officials that we work with. And what has happened from there is that they really like this idea. And knowing that all the teachers had laptops, et cetera, they said, okay, you know what? Let us offer it to our teachers. And, and, and they've done that in cohorts. Currently, they've trained up to 100, um, 1,614 uh, teachers have been enrolled. That is the online reading course. Uh, the next thing is that, remember I said in Limbamba we were testing for TAs, right? teacher assistants. So those are youths who are between the ages of 18 to 28, and they need to have a matric. Um, if they've got more than that, it's great, as long as they fall between the, age, uh, the ages. Um, and what we do the, with them then is train them to, with, the, with our materials so that they can better assist the teachers in the classroom. So what happened was, when PYEI had their the, the program, we shared our learnings with them. And as part of that sharing, we uh, let them use our Funda Wanda WhatsApp bot, which we use for the TAs, so that they can be supported in, 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 in getting these uh, reading strategies. And what we've seen there, if you look at that pie, it's, it's the feedback that we get from the WhatsApp bot to show us who is, uh, who's using the bot most. And if you see the yellow slice there, the biggest one, is, is the Eastern Cape, showing that the reading champions showing that the reading champions uh, from, from the Eastern Cape are the most active on, on that app. The provision of resources, I mean, again, I think Unabisa mentioned this thing earlier on in the morning where she was talking about a study that was done when the ECDOE rolled out the anthologies to all learners, that they found that there was a 20% impact in terms of their reading scores. So, um, and our involvement in this was that we put together the partners that had developed the uh, they, you know those Vulapula anthologies most were just single, small books, ne? which would cost around about, I think, 15 to 26 rands per, per story. So what we did then was combine the stories together and we got like 21 stories into one anthology and that cost 15 rands only. So it talks to how can we as partners and as other stakeholders, <laughs> other stakeholders, how can we talk to each other to make resources that are um, that are affordable. Um, and our materials, like I said, we have developed materials in CPA, DSACOS, and Africans for literacy and numeracy, and those are open source. So anybody who wants to use the materials can use them in any way that they see fit. Um, and 
the last strand that we would uh, we are going to be assisting in is monitoring evaluation and support and if you can see there that person you see might look familiar all right. So there, we, we, um, because like again, we, I said we do research on the pilots that, that, and the interventions that we have. Um, that talks to the coaching intervention that we did in the Eastern Cape, where we found that with coaches that go to schools to visit teachers, to assist teachers with practice, etc., learners there gained two more terms of learning than the control school, right? Um, and then came COVID. A year later came COVID. Um, and because we were following the, the intervention, collecting data, et cetera, we could then say what, what COVID did, like what kind of losses that the learners um, experienced, like Umpumi was showing earlier on in the morning. Um, and then lastly, that book, I keep saying like so-and-so was saying, like Stephen was saying earlier on in the morning about the books that are going to come out. This is part of um, the, 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 the set of books and it's about reading. And that one has got the study where we're talking about the anthologies and what the, the impacts that the anthologies had on the learners. Um, and what, what we're saying then around monitoring and evaluation is that we have such rich data. And it's, it's, it's really great that we can use it to, because some of this data that was used here informed when and why schools should be reopened. Because I don't think anyone was measuring the losses, but when we saw how hectic the losses were, it was, okay, let's rethink, Let, let's open schools again. Um, and we as Funda Wandeke can be a thinking partner and see how this data can be collected so, so that it's a province-wise, it gives us results, outcomes on literacy and numeracy based on what the strategy um, is able to achieve. Uh, oh, thank you. A big round of applause for Funda Wande. I don't know what is happening there, but uh, I don't have a sense of their, their, their board, uh, how old is their board. But, but what I see at Funda Wande is youth. And the husband, the passion you found, son, abandon, abandon, ring, but killeke kuyo downi. Change your kubu peace, be youth, kubu peace, be youth. This passion of getting closer to serious stuff. Where, where did you get it? Because all of you, you are young there, but you are so serious. You are, you are presenting on serious stuff here. You know, so so which means uh, our 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 country and uh, our province is in the right hands and has got a bright future. So thanks uh, thanks uh, Funda Wande for for that. We will we'll allow after this this uh, presentations just to have some reflection uh, before we get to the summary and then uh, uh, the the the. the the, the closing uh, remarks by the by the MEC. Uh, clicks uh, click foundation. And I'm going to click snabad who is a gago up. Click foundation, Miss N. Harris. You move it here. You move it backwards here. Oh, this is your. Okay. Thanks, Maria. Thanks. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am. A little bit intimidated by Permi's greeting, so I will just go, um, you know, good afternoon, MEC, HOD, um, senior management, um, and um, if I can follow um, 
uh, previous examples and say all protocols observed. Um, it's a great privilege to stand here as a partner in the Eastern Cape um, and to um, be here at the launch of the Eastern Cape Reading Strategy. Um, and we look forward to working in collaboration with the Eastern Cape to see where we can assist in delivering the strategy and um, I think all singing from the he same hymn sheet in terms of all um, learners reading for meaning and calculating with confidence by 2030. Um, so just to clarify on the name, nothing to do with clicks. <laughs> and we have recently, <laughs> recently actually rebranded as Click Learning, so as to clarify that we're not a grant-making foundation, but we are actually an operational NGO, so Click Learning. <laughs> so who are we? Um, we are an NGO that works with provincial governments and districts to help underserviced primary schools in South Africa improve foundational literacy, numeracy, and digital skills by deploying online um, uh, programs. In the process, we've also created jobs for youth in the communities who assist in schools with the implementation, similar to the teaching assistance um, previously discussed. Um, a little bit more specifically, what does this mean? So um, I think technology has many meanings for people from a WhatsApp chat group um, to television um, to sort of PDF documents. For us, when we talk about technology interventions, we are very specifically talk, talking about um, personalized learning interventions for learners where it's interactive. Um, there is a lot of data that sits behind it and guides learners on a um, personalized learning journey. Um, where software like this is really um, useful at the moment, given the learning losses we've suffered, is it is able to meet a learner at the level where they currently are and bridge some of the gaps in terms of catch-up and allow them to sort of come up to the level that they can actually access um, the curriculum. So our main focus is on providing learner logins for um, self-paced learning programs. Um, in order to do this, um, we assist schools in enabling the environment in terms of devices, connectivity, and security, and thereby also improve digital skills. Um, as mentioned, we fund, train, and develop facilitators to assist in these schools, and particularly around the technical aspects, so as to not burden the um, teachers um, with that side of um, the implementation. Um, and uh, the other side of um, what comes out of this is that we are able to provide quite a lot of data um, and it's an area where we hope to provide more um, in the coming year in terms of how learners are progressing and achieving in the programs and also to support and guide the schools um, with the implementation. Um, just a quick snapshot of, of where we are. We're working in 299 schools across the country with um, 200,000 learners registered on our literacy programs and 27,000 on our numeracy programs. Um, they're accessing these programs through uh, just over 18,000 devices in the field and um, through this we've created 714 jobs. Um, in terms of the Eastern Cape, it's our newest province, but we've grown. We started at the end of 2019, bit of a setback with COVID, um, but excited to have launched um, 41 schools in the province um, and have over 23,000 um, learners on the literacy programs and look forward to growing that further in the coming year. Um, I think the main thing to talk about today is um, how can we partner with the um, Eastern Cape Department of Education in terms of the strategy and campaign being launched today. Um, I thought perhaps we'd hear from some of our teachers. Um, play. Whoop. Is there any chance you can press play on the video? Maybe it's lost it. I'm sure they'd be able to share their experience with you better than I am. Okay. 
let's move on, because I know it's been a long day for everyone. So <laughs> I think um, what I just want to highlight, I think in terms of technology, I think we believe it offers huge potential to support a strategy like this, but it isn't a silver bullet. It is um, complex to implement and it needs an integrated strategy and it's not just about putting devices and connectivity into schools. But um, from our experience, we are confident that through effective implementation, we can use technology to make a significant difference and improve learner outcomes and ensure that our learners are ready for the future of work and um, the digital economy. Um, <clears throat> if we talk a little bit about um, impact and results, um, what um, having connected schools has enabled us to do is to also start looking at um, digital assessments. Um, and we've looked at the results of um, 14,000 learners um, that we tested at the end of 2019 um, through what we called our e-quiz. Um, <clears throat> and we're seeing significant um, improvement in results of um, over 12% in terms of learners who have um, used the program versus those who, who haven't used the program. So I think there, um, you know, further work and, and examination that we want to do in terms of the impact results, but also wanted to highlight um, the use of um, digital testing um, tools that could also be rolled out at scale um, in schools to support um, the assessment. Um, so, when I read through the objectives of, um, re of the reading in the um, uh, strategy document, and I, I won't reread them, but a lot of the things that came through were around um, reading for enjoyment, resources, um, preparing um, learners for the digital age. So, in terms of interventions like this, where I think um, we can support the department is um, these interventions are fun and interactive, as you can see from the visual here. They contain thousands of activities and resources and um, as I said previously, they enable us to sort of teach at the right le level and meet learners where they are in their learning journey um, and hopefully um, bridge the gap um, that, that has been created, particularly now on the back of COVID. Um, more specifically, where can we assist? Um, enabling schools, we have learned a lot um, in connecting 300 schools with working computers where for six hours of the day, we've got 18,000 computers with learners in front of them learning almost nonstop through the school day. Um, we have experience in implementing online self-paced learning programs. Um, and I think there's um, uh, room for greater collaboration on that. And I think it extends to using those resources that are already in schools for teachers. Um, allowing access to programs like the Teaching Academy um, and other offerings that, that are available. Um, selecting digital programs. With the structure that we've now created in terms of using the e-quiz, which we'll now use as a baseline in all schools and test each year, um, we know that there are a lot of programs that are out there. Um, we certainly get approached by lots of product providers and, and uh, wanting us to look at their programs. And I think we um, are able to work with the department on a framework to try and select which product in which circumstances will deliver the best results for um, learners. And you know, this is just a handful of products that have come our way so far. Um, I mentioned our online assessment. Um, I saw a very strong focus on assessment and in-school assessment um, in the reading strategy. Um, Again, I think there's room for digital assessments to possibly assist teachers, um, reduce the time required for testing to free them up to spend time teaching. Um, and again, you know, I'm very happy to, to look at ways that that can be used further. Um, and again, um, here are just two photos of some of our facilitators. Um, again, I think these extra resources into the schools, particularly in our context around supporting the technology and the, um, uh, ensuring the hardware is kept safe, working, and um, that the technical aspects are looked after so as not to put additional burdens onto the teachers. Um, again, I think there's um, lots of opportunity to collaborate on those aspects as well. So that's all from me. Thank you.
a big round of applause for Ms. Harris. <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope that we are, we are noting these areas of collaboration. Um, and I, I think uh, we also need to collate all these initiatives into one report and also maybe map it so that we have a, got, got a, a geospatial uh, arrangement so to see where things are happening and where they are not happening. And also maybe link it with, uh, with, with, with districts that we know that have got serious challenges. Uh, for instance, if you, you, you know that your Owartambo coastal is, is highly populated, uh, Owartambo inland, highly populated, the uh, Alfreds or East, is a highly populated uh, district. So with, with greater numbers of grade 12, you'll get them in Alfred's coastal, I mean, um, uh, Owartambo coastal, followed by Owartambo inland, and then your Nelson Mandela and your Buffalo City. But in the rural part, is everything going right at a primary level? So I think it's something that we need to look into uh, in terms of these partnerships as they are presented. Uh, Xenex Foundation. Uh, represented by Ms. F. Sayo. Where, where is Xenex? Oh, yes. A big round of applause for Xenex Foundation. Okay. The MEC, HOD, the senior management in the district, Okoze Ndinga Bodi, Inganga, Nense Bazayu, Ngalemba Kwemini, Mandini Bulis. HOD, the beauty of speaking at this time when everyone is so exhausted and you know that most of the speaking is going to be a repetition of the previous speaker, is the fact that I'm not going to take the allocated 10 minutes. I'm going to speak for much, much less. Firstly, I just want to quickly introduce who the Zenex Foundation is. We are a grant maker that is based in Gauteng who have been in operation since 1994. We focus specifically on in improving literacy and mathematics outcomes in South Africa within the schooling system. And our approach is very much uh, evidence-based. We do monitoring and evaluations of all our interventions. And for us, the commitment is on sustainable change. So just briefly about what we do as the Zenex Foundation, we took a focused approach in saying that we are not working throughout the schooling system. So we work in the early grades. Our projects start from grade R up to grade four, and we work in the senior phase, specifically in grades eight and nine. As I've already said, we are fo focusing on mathematics and, 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 and languages. We work with school managers teachers both in service and ITE, and uh, we work in four provinces specifically, and Eastern Cape is one of our core provinces, uh, and we've been having interventions in, in the Eastern Cape since our inception in 1994, and we have been moving forward with the changing strategies both in the province and also at the Zenex Foundation, and most of our work that is at national level is mostly for systemic projects that are led by the Department of Education. Otherwise, our target provinces is Gauteng, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and KwaZulu-Natal. You asked us about what role we wanted to play uh, in the reading strategy of the province. 
And to be quite honest, when I looked into the, the, the brochure that you, you provided, I actually thought I do not have much to say because when Miss Genevieve was listing the 10 strands, I looked at the work that is done by the Zenex Foundation and about 80% of those strands are one, are some of our core areas. So the work that you are launching this afternoon or today, I should say, is very aligned to the work that we are doing as the Zenex Foundation. So there is not a need for me to repeat much of the work that we are doing today. And uh, I will just say that we agree with all the assumptions that have been tabled here by, by, by both uh, the launch of the, uh, 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 and, and also by also the speakers that were speaking this morning in front of me. And we agree that reading for meaning is a necessary condition for all. And based on all the assumptions that I've listed here and some that are not even here, but that we all know, we are saying that as the next for this strategic period, we have looked into a four-pronged uh, approach in dealing with reading outcomes, specifically in the phases that we work in. The first one is we are funding, uh, Funda Wanda is one of the interventions that we fund or the organizations that we fund in making sure that these outcomes are in place. But some of them is the fact that we are de uh, developing quality readers in fiction and nonfiction that are graded through the ULA Zulete project that are there to enable teaching in the classroom. We are also working with uh, lots of interventions here in the Eastern Cape, some with the Nelson Mandela Institute. I'm not going to go through the interventions, even though I've got a slide for them. But we've got uh, professional development where we, we work with in-service teachers, dealing specifically with issues of literacy and also numeracy in both the early grades and the, and, 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 and the senior phase. We work with, uh, with, with promoting best practices uh, specifically in focusing on African language reading in for, for initial teacher, uh, teacher education. And also, uh, Mbumi has spoken about the benchmarks. I'm not going to go into detail in that. But we have partnered as well with the DBE in making sure that those the benchmarks come into effect as a guide in working with our teachers in the, in the early grades. So that's basically the four-pronged approach. And in that four-pronged approach, if I was going to go in th into the detail, you will see what I'm talking about as being involved in 80% of the strengths that we have actually listed here this afternoon. I'm not going to go through the work that we're doing in the Eastern Cape, but this is just work that is happening currently, which I can share with the HOD. As you can see, specific focus in mathematics and languages. Just to conclude, uh, the message that we are bringing this afternoon is the fact that we also do not believe that there is any magic bullet, as, uh, as, as, as the speaker just left saying. But we, as the Zenex Foundation, we want to say we are willing and we are committed to work hand in hand and also work side by side with the ECDOE and also our other stakeholders that are in the room and some that are not here in improving the reading outcomes. We have just come to say we are committed, we want to work with you, and we also re recognize that our education system is actually in, at a time of a need, specifically in the improvement of our long-term endeavors. Thank you very much. Uh, a big round of applause uh, for the next foundation. One of the documents that they've produced with the next foundation is on the on the learning backlogs, a and it's very critical. If, for instance, we are to address the current challenge that we have in the in the education system, especially in our province. The, the, just the analysis that we have done, just taking five years from 2017 to 2021 in terms of grade 12s, we looked at the enrollment when 
the learners who were doing grade 12 in 2017, how many were they when they started in grade one? And we discovered that that grade 12 cohort of 2017, there were 189,000 when they started grade one. 12 years going backwards. But in 2017, we had only 69,000 in grade 12. So in the whole system, we had lost more than 100,000, 120,000. Others have dropped out. Others are repeating. Others bagule phenomenon, go try progress, learn. Others but drop out altogether. So when you looked at uh, 2021, we discovered that at least we have improved. Although the, or the, the, the grade one, while a group got 2021, was a bit lower, but it was around 180 or 179. But we had at least a higher number who grade 12, which is about 98, very close to 100,000. But still, we have lost about 70,000 even then, last year. This year, we have 101,500 learners that have registered for grade 12. But I've not looked at 12 years going backwards. Now, that study, as the next foundation, is so critical to identify these uh, learning backlogs that must be closed such that when you get your, if you have 200,000 learners in grade one, that, that, that line must move straight like this. The 200 that you start with in grade one, after 12 years you must get it, but not less than 90%. And if you get 90%, you must also be able to account for the 10%, OP. You must, you must begin to say that 10% we, 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 they were branched towards technical, towards vocational, others they went to the schools of skills, and so on and so on. But at the end of that, we must be able to account for all of them, those who started the grade one. So I think that study is going to help us in that regard. Uguti, where do we plug again Google as or learning backlogs such that these learners are able to complete their schooling within 12 years? So that's what we need to, to, be, to be working on. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot uh, as, as the next foundation for the presentation. We are now going to call upon our, our social partners. Uh, they are always with us uh, in Galolongi Asia because they've got an interest in this, because they, and in Yanga Yabogeli, the labor unions as a representative educators in the, in the, in the province. Because I've been introduced, I've been introduced, I've been introduced, and I've been introduced, okay. Sis Gwen, can you then please come forward? So deputy secretary Education Convener of the province is at Tilung Sanjelont. Uh, the program director, Bishop Mbete in absentia. MEC of Education, Honorable Fundi Legate. We used to call him Plex. <laughs> Chairperson of the Education Portfolio Committee, Honorable Saziwa. Head of Department. Mr. Kwase, Minister, Deputy Minister of Education in absentia, 
Dr. Mshawule and all department officials in your designated seats, sister unions and all delegates to this launch, we greet you all in the name of people's education for people's power. For that, in the name of Christ, amen. <laughs> uh, st for starters, let me render my utmost heartfelt gratitude for this opportunity afforded to this teacher, to these teacher unions as social partners to be amongst in the midst, especially to speak on behalf of us all. You, 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 you would remember, would say nothing about us without us and for us. We rise to appreciate the invitation in, the, in this strategy. The department has initiated of prioritizing reading and also devised strategies and means to improve reading within our sector. I speak from a better, better style of being a teacher. Indeed, allow me to say you have shot it in the bull's eye. As we all know that COVID-19 has put more pressure and challenges and further eroded much of time and space that could be utilized to improve the phenomenon. Reading has been and still a tremendous challenge prior to COVID and currently. It is an elephant in the house. We hope and wish amongst the strategies that will be and PEP today, as trade unionists, we pledge to be in the venture of capacitating and implementing the way forward for this launch as we are in the journey of training educators on unplugged and plugged coding and robotics. We should note that seriously the challenges we encounter as far as assessment and assessing for learning is concerned. We strongly appeal to the Department of Education to work with us in getting assessment strategies better and you juxtapose what we are saying with what was raised by the Minister of Education, National Minister of Education yesterday's virtual meeting. I quote, open quotes, all learners in, in schools are behind by a term and a quarter. For argument's sake, she further said a grade four learner in essence, is a grade three learner. Close quotes. In Jimotzecha, 3rd October 2022. Hence, we said it is paramount to develop strong reading skills in learners as it is one of the key goals of every early education program. For a learner to be able to requisite a meaningful learning, one needs to be a strong reader, read with meaning, comprehend what one reads. We believe that a child is raised by a village. We therefore strongly say that it is very paramount and very important for all stakeholders to be in the same boat when we speak of reading. How can we do that? We are recommending in this gathering that let's go back to basics. Parent to read for their children, listen for their children when reading, give them space, to, 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 to explain what they are reading. We used to go and for storytelling, listen to intro Minamabali around a fire, go back to spelling bees, and which is, is a, it is the enrichment in class, can be another form of enrichment is spelling bees. Bring back classroom libraries, teachers, principals who are here. Department, I think, you should revisit accessibility of those mobile libraries to schools. Eastern Cape Department provides zero-rated electric books to schools. We further recommend that intergovernmental departments or collaboration, for argument's sake, we speak of advocacy in the Department of Education, of health, when they speak with parents, when give them information on how to, on how to, like we speak of it, breast cancer, they read for them, let them read the information. Steve Biko has this to say, open quotes, a black man should be more independent and depend on himself for his freedom and not to take it for granted that someone would lead him to it. Blacks are tired of standing on touch lines 
to witness the games and they should be playing that. They want to do things for themselves, oh, close quotes. Hence we say, as people of South Africa, let's join hands, unite and fight the pandemic of Lena being unable to read. It is against this background that as trade unions, we have joint ventures with schools that every Friday of every week is drop all and read for an hour. We wish to humbly request the Department of Education to intensify monitoring the implementation by schools of drop all and read. We also encourage our educators to allow learners to read. Read. And also read as if there's no tomorrow. For enjoyment, of course. We also, Department of Education, as we assist, I request you to assist schools uh, to train young librarians so that they can be capacitated and assist in this process of borrowing and bringing back the school. Siabulela in course. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sis Gwen. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, leaders of the uh, labor unions that are working with us. And in every session that we organize, they're always there. Oh, I don't know about the group who said, Clean by singing at Banga Kuba, Ubasan, the singer. Sing a big. Because they've got a lot of depth on what is happening or not happening. Thank you very much, Gwen, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the leadership uh, at large uh, of the labor unions that are here. Uh, I, I like that Friday thing, that campaign, the popular campaign. We must own up to that initiative as a collective of all the partners in the in the in the in the, in the province. See, see, see profile. We we market it. Um, uh, but, but as part of the things that we'll have to to take home out of this launch. That's one of the issues that we need to take home and, and see how we can take it forward. Um, I, I want to open up a little bit, Gengoku. Just a few comments, uh, because Ogoni uh, we're just short of coming to the altar to confess your sins. <laughs> but I would like to, to change the environment. Can we, can we have an engagement? And, and the issues that we want to raise that must be taken on board as we go back and consolidate all this work and map the, a very clear action plan going forward. We said most at the beginning that is, this is not going to be a talk show. Having developed this strategy, it needs implementation tomorrow. And other, other partners have already started. And we can't converge in this fashion. And, and uh, a number of people showcase our pioneering spirit as the Eastern Cape and then we go back and relax. Any takers? Uh, I see a hand there. Any further hands? Uh, I know Guba. Kukwa bantu aba, abanya bantu banga, ba fana na, ba fana na ban baga zero to five. Pana ku ku early childhood development between zero to five. 
there's the stimulation. It happens at that level, at that stage. So I, I, I can see Apakuna Bantu Abakola stimulation. They must be stimulated by a contribution from another person. They then raise their hands. So number two. Uh, number three. What? Uh, number one now. Uh, number two now. Uh, number three. Pa. In, in that order. Um, thank you, Ndate Kwase. My name is Tabelo Legena. I come from Jogabi, specifically in Mount Fletcher. I would like to check with the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape or to give them a provision as to what commitment is the department making in making sure that <clears throat> Sesotho as a language of learning and teaching in the foundation phase and as a subject in the intermediate until FET is being promoted in the province. I am asking this in relation to the presentation also that was made by Funda Wande, where I have seen specifically four languages presented and Sipedi as the fourth one. Yet in the Eastern Cape, we have Sisutu as the fourth language. I am also saying this based on the personal experience as a person who has been in the system for more than 50 years now, since the time I first went to school. Currently in the Eastern Cape, we have about 1,238,000 learners, amongst which 35,132 as Sisutu learners from grade R to 12. But as the Sisutu people in the province, we are net, not yet convinced how Sisutu is being taken care of. And lastly, I was whispering to Ndate Wababa. I was looking at the fourth bullet on the banner for reading strategy in the Eastern Cape. I would really love to meet the people who were writing that bullet to give them the correct version of the language. Because unless I can be told that it's a different language that I do not know, that last, last bullet about improving reading to improve learning, it's, it's, it doesn't make me happy at all. I can't see it as Sitswana neither or Sibedi, so please, I'm willing to assist so that people out there get the correct version of the language. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks, um, uh, <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, HOD. Mm -hmm. My name is Luto uh, Kota from e-learning, the director for e-learning uh, in the province. I think uh, mine is just to, to appreciate this uh, stage that we are at as the, as, the, as the department, but I was just looking into how we can start aligning various programs, especially when it comes to getting reading then through various platforms. We've got Click Foundation that is here that already has deployed some resources. We've got Funda Wande also that had um, um, some anthologies that they do have. You know, somehow then way in we can then also, um, in the light maybe we may not be having adequate budgets in terms of doing the, a lot of printing of hard copies, then start exploring those through the devices that are already on the ground and then pushing further reading in terms of um, reading through those tablets that were provided. So mine is then to, to make a suggestion, maybe Nandi, uh, uh, through the partnerships office way in we can start a collaborative kind of meeting wherein all these key stakeholders perhaps that were in this session, we can then further see how do we then align all these programs, collaboration uh, amongst everyone so that we can push a lot of things. We're pushing e-learning because we already have Click Foundation that is there. We have then all these other Xenex and everybody else that is already on the ground uh, to, 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 to push uh, you know, e-learning further 
uh, through the reading strategy also. Thank you. I know we've already started with Ufunda one day, especially on the reading academy, uh, in building up that online platform. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Kota, uh, for that contribution number three. Uh, thank you very much, Program Director. Uh, my name is Nombuiselo Boya, uh, principal of a school in the OR district, OR Tambo Inland, Jonglanga uh, Primary School. I feel re greatly honored and really appreciate this kind of uh, workshop that I've attended today, and uh, because to me it has been an eye opener. And what is worse that I like most is that now, as the department, we have taken the correct route of looking at the primary schools, starting from grade R up to grade nine. I wish really this program shouldn't be a window dressing as we've indicated HOD. It has to be implemented as soon as possible. Now, what I want to appreciate as well is also the partners, the partners that are with the Department of Education that have presented here. I was personally not aware of some of these programs, of which I wish also the department could take these things forward to the schools and inform the teachers. I think also the unions, as they are here, they're able to empower the teachers on the field. Really, I want to appeal to the, this workshop that now let's take it further. It will be a blessing to our learners, and especially for the results that we're always looking for in grade 12. This is the correct start of which we are already late. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a guy, uh, <laughs> Mr. Jack. Uh, I know that uh, in one forum, I'm American. Mr. Jack Amos. Mr. Jack Amos. No. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mzugisi Jack. Just, 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 it would not necessarily on the strategy, but perhaps to our partners, particularly those that are involved in the preparation of, of educators, which is your higher education institutions. I think recently I read an article, I think in the main, it's in your western part of the province that the, it looks like it's gaining momentum that your Khoi people are now demanding to be taught in their own language. And, and, and perhaps your, your, your sign language. What capacities do we have in our higher education institutions in so far as preparing educators for all the spoken languages in our, in our province? I am, I am raising this because of the current spoken languages, we do have a serious challenge with Africans as a language. I, I am not talking about only Africans as a language, but also as a medium of instruction. So to what extent perhaps our institutions that prepare educators ready, capacitated, and so on, to deliver on such Mondays. I am raising this because I'm taking advantage of the representatives I see from the University of Forte as well as Rhodes University now, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, thanks. Uh. Okay. Uh, is uh, uh, Ms. Tembo and then uh, uh, my leader there, yeah. Nabdosa, and then uh, uh, Ms. Master, in that order. Thank you, HOD, and good afternoon to all the dignitaries that are in the house, including the senior management of the department and our guests. Um, HOD, to make a, a contribution on this important uh, event, I, I think it is a very significant uh, discussion that we are having um, in the department, in both in the context of education and also in the context of um, the country and the history at large. Uh, what I want to, to propose or to, 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 to suggest is the issue of the erosion of mother tongue, particularly Kosa. 
Um, I know the previous speaker did highlight the issue of uh, Sesotho uh, in the province, but uh, socially there, there is an, an erosion of the mother tongue, um, particularly maybe because as the middle class, now that our children are going to the former Model C schools, um, I've got a three, two boys that are going to grade three and grade two. And every time we help them with their homeworks, their homework is always English, maths, and Africans. And we had to inquire at the school that they go to, why are we not seeing any homeworks in Kosa? And the, in Isit Kosa. And we were told by the principal that no, Isit Kosa and all the other languages, they are in equal footing. And the principal made a comment that, by the way, these kids, they speak English even at home. So there is a, there is a feel that because our kids speak English, they are exposed to English, TV is in English, they, they talk to us in English, there is a feeling that our, their mother tongues, they are no longer important or they, uh, they do not have a space in the future. Everyone will be communicating in, in English. So it's something that I feel that the, the department needs to take a serious consideration and also make an appeal as well to the political leadership as well to elevate the issue of mother tongues. I appreciate what I see in provinces like your KZN where Isizulu is compulsory, even in institutions of higher learning, that irrespective of the degree that you are doing, as long as you are studying in KZN, you are, it's mandatory that you have to learn Isizulu. And that speaks to the protection of the language itself. It speaks to social cohesion. So it's something that the, the province as well, we need to come in very hard and come in very strongly because it's only us who are the custodians of the Xhosa language. There is no any other person who can protect uh, Isi Xhosa. So it, it, it is uh, something that needs to be taken very seriously. Thank you very much, Judy. Uh, thanks, madam. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Kose. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to first appreciate the organization uh, for today. This house is so rich. It has never been like this before. That then says to me, where is this project sitting within the department? whom are we going to be conducting to try and sift because we can't be doing the same thing all of us at the same time. It has happened many a times that we all embark on one task when in actual fact there are experts in the room. When we will be doing something else, they must be doing this and then we can see progress in what we are doing. I think that is the main thing that I want to appeal for within the department. Otherwise, all these uh, launches and things will be just a talk show. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, madam. Uh, Ms. Master, and then you will be followed by uh, the honorable lady at the back we outsource a little mike over to you miss master okay thank you hod good afternoon mec honorable saziwe and the leadership of the department as well as my colleagues and our partners allow me first to congratulate the branch curriculum I think this is well done. They have put us on the map. They have really made us proud. So congratulations to them. 
I also want to just reflect some positive things that I pick up on the strategy. The fact that they included inclusive education, learners with learning disabil uh, disabilities, which is very important. I want to share the remarks from Mr. Jack. HOD, just yesterday I visited two schools, one Butterworth and one in BCM. And really languages has come up because the, the strategy of the cluster is to visit the high enrollment schools and to see what can we do to assist them still with the next three weeks. With the one school, but very disappointing, half of the learners, because are speaking learners, but they were doing Afrikaans and they were struggling to pass Afrikaans. Mm. So I think these things are posing a challenge to us to see really how we're really going to assist our learners, especially the learners um, that are forced to go to a school that is uh, Afrikaans medium school or an English medium school. How are we going to assist these learners? When I look at our strategy, maybe what we should consider to look in terms of short term, medium term, and long-term um, implementing strategies. Our short-term is what can we do now without bothering the CFO. Um, the medium-term strategies is basically what can we also plan for the medium but then bother the CFO a little bit. The long-term strategy is where we bother the <laughs> CFO and Mr. Nguni. Because now we're talking about we need additional educators, we need the training of remedial educators, now we're bothering Mr. Jack. So this will have major financial implications. So I wouldn't want us to stop here today, but maybe take it a little bit further and I'll ask the branch to craft for us a strategy along that line. Short term, medium term and long term. So when we're done with that one, the one with least financial implication, little bit of financial implication, and then maybe in the two, three years, where we're talking now in terms of some major financial implications. I also want us now to start cascading it to districts. Remember, we do not have enough subjects advisors in our districts. But how can we start with a little bit? And maybe in terms of that, there's things that are doable. One of the things that are doable is to ensure that every school is having a school-based support team. Once the school is having a school-based support team, now the teachers can identify the learners who are struggling, mastering phonics, whether it's Afrikaans, whether it's English, whether it's, whether it's Kosa learners. That is where we start, through the school-based support team. And then on a school level, we start with an individual support plan for a learner. So these things are doable. We don't need money from the, the, the CFO. And then basically, also what we can do from the curriculum section is having your um, Afrikaans clinics or, or your language clinics where you basically, like we are doing it now with our matriculants, where we basically say, okay, this is how we're going to cascade it from district to district to school. So looking at it, yes, it is doable. We don't have to shelf it. We don't have to wait for money. We can start immediately with some implementation. So again, from my side, congratulations. I'm standing here today again as the province that are producing the legends and the leaders, and we're showing again who we are as Eastern Cape. Thank you so much. Thanks, madam. Okay. Thank you, HOD. <laughs> My name is um, Tembisa Chombolo. Uh, HOD, my contribution is just um, the acknowledgement from the speakers in this room today when they cited some positives that the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape is doing. Um, there were pockets of excellence there They've talked up us about strengthening the interventions that we already have in the provinces. 
how they view us from the, from the eyes of the people outside the department. It was quite motivating. Um, I would also like to uh, acknowledge a light that they have shared with us of where we are as an Eastern Cape and the advices that they are giving us of where and how do we go from here. Um, I would also um, like to uh, make a special request, HOD, to say as big as the system it is, we cannot win this struggle if we do not tighten our nuts and bolts in some areas or parts of the system like the employment of subject advisors, the employment of teachers, strengthening remedial interventions and remedial classes, and also multi-grade teachers. Another last request, uh, if we can also consider a planning with our partners so that we know who's who uh, in the zone. We work together and we plan together so that uh, we share, um, uh, we share uh, uh, progress and obviously we share our successes. If we plan together, we go together and we, 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 we take credit of all our winnings. Thank you, HOD. You, uh, thanks, madam. You, you are the last one. You are the last one. And then uh, we'll get some responses. Um, and Mr. Chwagadi uh, will then uh, give us one from, from here what is going to happen, how do we take forward this, uh, this work, and then the MEC will come at the end to close the session. Yes, Good madam. afternoon, HOD. My name is Lauren Fock. I'm from the Xenix Foundation. Um, thank you for today. It's been very inspiring. Um, I have two questions. The first one is that one of the points that Dr. Taylor mentioned this morning was the um, problem of teacher fatigue around interventions. And one of the core components that um, the reading strategy hinges on is um, teacher training, teacher knowledge, and the, the, the pivotal role that teachers play in the delivery of the strategy. And I think that um, I just want to check whether there are any strategies um, or alternatives um, in, in delivering on the strategy that incorporates that problem. Um, and I know that even in our intervention, teachers do struggle to come to workshops, um, whether it's on the weekends, but also just in terms of appetite, energy, motivation. Um, and I think that it takes, um, uh, um, yeah, possibly having to look at other areas in the system that we also need to address. The second thing is that um, um, Ms. Kupman mentioned that she needs about 460 million over the next um, seven, eight years to fund the strategy. And I just wanted to check what um, of that do you need from external partners and what will be the department's contribution? Um, and I'm obviously not asking you for rands and cents, but I am, I am thinking that, um, you know, if it's a, it's a, if it's a partnership, um, I'm sure that there are many people who are keen to come to the table. Um, but I think that as a, as a partnership, we'd also like to see the Eastern Cape DOE put in money in, and, and, and showing your stake in the game, or rather role playing in the game. <laughs> Thanks. No, no, thanks, uh, thanks, madam. Uh, Miss, uh, I would like to uh, our colleagues from Rose and uh, University of Forte to comment on that issue of the state of readiness of higher education institutions uh, to deal with this demand now for language and the problem of Africans' kids that are doing. Africans at university, but they don't want to come back and teach it. 
Now, that's why we have that problem now in Sarah Batman of these uh, African medium schools struggling to attract. Now, we are forced to re-employ the retired educators, the Africans, back into the system because of that problem. So, which is going to put the Africans, which is more of a mother tongue, on some parts of the province. Ibeka na as a as an endangered language in those parts of the province. Um, so, 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 and and also other new languages that have since been uh, been profiles to be equal to others, your sign language, for instance, and the Koi languages, the indigenous ones. So, 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 so I would, I would like to, to, to have you to, uh, commenting on this. Um, our, our speakers, if they have issues that uh, they want to comment on, they can do that. Uh, but I think oh, Ms. Kopman and oh, Budre will indicate uh, what is going to happen on other issues that are being raised here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Over to you. Is that Forte or uh, Good. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mzuyanda Mavuso. I am a deputy dean teaching and learning uh, in the Faculty of Education, University of Forte. Uh, maybe before I react on Mr. Jack's uh, input in terms of teacher preparation, let me also concur with my other colleagues who have actually emphasized the relevance of this uh, 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 event. Uh, really, it was, it was actually an exciting uh, experience on my side. And I trust that, as the colleagues have, have put, it will find expression in terms of implement, implementation. Uh, yes, uh, let me quickly go to, 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 to Mr. Jack. <laughs> A, 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 a question. As the University of Forte, we, when we develop programs, uh, we develop programs in such a way that we take into consideration the languages that are, are, are dominant in the Eastern Cape, English, Kosa, Africans, Isisutu. Though we are lacking with Isisutu and Africans, I will tell you why we are predominantly offering the two, that is English and Africans, especially in our Alice campus where we are training uh, teachers specializing in the secondary school education. Having said that, uh, we do have a program ready because when we recapitulate or develop our programs to be approved by Council on Education, we package them in such a way that we do not leave anything behind which we, we deem fit to be uh, offered in the future. We do have Africans as, as a subject to be, to, in our program, the structure, how it's structured. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the way we operate, maybe it's something that we will need to take further with the office come, Mr. Jack, and whoever is responsible for for teacher development in the province. When we find that the, we don't attract numbers in terms of students enrolling for that particular uh, subject, uh, then uh, to, to, to an extent that maybe it, the students that we have are even less than five, the university would say this one is not viable. Then we end up that, pro, that particular course or module becomes uh, non-viable and we end up not uh, bothering ourselves to do what to admit students for that particular module. Then now that we have learned that in the Eastern Cape province there is a dire shortage of teachers who, are, who need to be trained on Africans, 
then that will not be a problem because we'll just go on to ourselves, take the, the program back, and maybe as a way of attracting students, we can have a bilateral with the Eastern Cape Department of Education to say, look, please uh, encourage students and even, if possible, offer them passaries to go and do uh, this module so that they can be trained. Then once, for argument's sake, we can have about 20, 30, that will be enough because that once it's beyond 15 in terms of number of students, we consider that module viable. But once it's less than 15, then it becomes uh, non-viable. Then we end up not uh, offering it because it's not attracting students. So, so that what I have said, I think it talks to issues of collaboration largely, not necessarily on issues of language, but on other issues that relates to how education, uh, in particular, the performance of learners in the Eastern Cape, not necessarily grade 12 learners, but all the learners in the system could be enhanced. Thank you so much, Chair. Mm. Thank you. Uh, thanks, for Chair. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. I want to Sabalande. Sabalande. Can you go to your language One minute, Mr. Waba. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. And uh, I'll, let me start with the first one on translation, on the translation for Isisoto on our banner. And uh, I'll, I'll take the, the blame on that one because we, we outsource the translation of Isisutu because we don't have Isisutu person in our office. So I'll take it with my officials. And um, on the third one, the third one which was raised by oh, Mrs. Tembo around the ero erosion of mother tongue. I, I do not know how to respond on that one because this is what I've been saying department, you could see. The issue of um, mother tongue is not a magic. It, it, it cannot be automatic. And uh, it needs to be supported consistently so. This is what I've been trying to do. And um, let me end there. Let me end there. HOT knows about that, and uh, I've raised it a number of times with the MSC. All the DDGs who are here, they know because I've got a um, language implementation plan to support schools that are doing ER incremental introduction of African languages and, uh, and, and, and to support the, the mother tongue based bilingual education from a school level to um, circuit to districts, but uh, the, the number of challenges uh, within the department, which I hope for raising the question that we have raised, things will change. And um, on issue of, uh, um, on, on question, question three, which was raised by Mamu Marstop, Around, around the challenge of, 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 of learners who are being taught in Africans when they're supposed to, 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 to learn in their mother tongues. Um, I, I'm glad that you're saying that the branch has to come with a plan. And oh, is, 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 would attest on this because I've presented four, four implementation work streams of the department where U, U, IOM has a work stream where I oversee Uti, how does the la language policy um, implementation place. And then there's a work stream for curriculum where we look on issues of teaching and learning assessment and examination. Maybe get the, the, the Long, short-term and long-term plan should be around that because 
as a um, language policy directorate, we're willing to support the curriculum on these matters. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank thanks, you. Uh, Mr. Wababa. Uh, the, 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 the doctor, there was the Steve Taylor, yeah. Okay, you can, you can share Pakatu with Nawabi, but who wants to have a last fight? No, I think th thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't think there were any questions specifically directed to, to me, if I remember correctly. But also to thank, uh, thank the department very much for having us today. We're, we're about to leave to catch mm. a flight. Mm. Mm. Um, but it's been really good to be here. And I'm actually going to be talking tomorrow morning uh, with our curriculum branch. We have a meeting and I'm going to share about, about the strategy um, because I, I think there's a lot that we can do at National to try to do something similar and to encourage other provinces to do something similar. Mm. And I think the alignment with the National, with the, with the sector reading, the national sector reading plan that, that I see embedded means that it, it should be easy for us to sort of take it on again from you. So thank you very much for having for having us today. Do you want to add anything from me? Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, no, no, not changing the curriculum. <laughs> just, uh, I, I think the, the 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 strategy is just useful to to guide. It's not changing anything in the curriculum. Um, but, but it's a very useful strategy to just guide all the program support. So thank you. And thanks, uh, thanks uh, uh, Dr. Till. Uh, colleagues, let me, uh, I'll, I'll use OTDG as a sweeper. Number five. So, uh, can you come forward, uh, Mr. Kyogadi? You, you, I was supposed to be saying Dr. Kwenzuku, and yeah, but I don't know why you are delaying. I've just prepared, you know, uh, two slides. Uh, go for a bit, look. Okay. Uh, colleagues, um, I'm going to respond to quite a number of queries using a broad framework uh, so that we can be, you know, from, from the same um, space. You know, it's very interesting. What will be different when you open up your window? And I think the question refers to all of us. When we receive these kids for the first time in the schooling system, and the question to all of us is that, what will be different when we open up our windows to these kids to see a better world, to see a bigger world? And the window metaphor for me, um, it's something that says, you know, it's, it's above language barriers. Uh, those who are Soto speaking, those who are Kosa speaking, those who are African speaking, those who are English speaking, we are given a responsibility as they come to our schools that we need to sell to them the bigger world. We need to open up a window so that they can communicate with the bigger world out there. I should think the horizon is, is, is quite huge and the scope is big for these children. We either kill them or we let them fly. And I should think that's where our responsibility is. And reading is one of those. Uh, I should think, Wababa, this one I owe it to you, ne? as a slide. I stole it from you. This is the framework of what we're supposed to do, and this is the scope of what we're supposed to do. If I were to challenge anyone of you to tell me a hoi san alphabet they know of their hearts, including master, including Genevieve Gokman, they can't move. And, 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 and I should think we have a responsibility because it's now an official language. In the Eastern Cape, we have a very huge and a very big community uh, of the Khoisan that is on the revival. It's not only Sotho, Kosa, you know, 
there's, there's, there's small communities that are official, part of the official languages. So our scope is, is, is almost broader. And in this case, we also include the sign language and the braille. And if you look at these, these were originally marginalized forms of communication that are brought in back into the mainstream because the question is really how do you open up their horizons in order for them to sit through the window if you don't allow them and give them the tools to be able um, to, to, to interface with the broader world. Uh, where there is a big problem is the fact that over years, some of these languages were killed you know, to non-existence and our duty is to start to rebuild the vocabulary, to rebuild, you know, uh, the whole construct of these languages, you know, let alone, you know, we have not even been able, you know, to, 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 to establish algorithms that allow us to read them through either, you know, uh, your cell phone, you know, your, 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 your Microsoft programs. So th we still have a long way to go. But in this conference, I should think our main goal is how do we make sure that all of these children, by the time they leave grade 10, they can read and write with meaning and with comprehension. There's a mistake it will be that we normally make is that our ability to memorize at that time we're doing sub A, sub B is that we're also reading with meaning and we could read with comprehension. And more often than not, we, we were really into road learning. And early in the morning against the wall, you start and, ah, eh, eh. and at times, you'll find is that what killed the capacity of our education system to produce um, you know, thinking and critical individuals is the fact that 80% of our learning was road learning. Nobody says it's wrong to use road learning to teach, but what is important is that there should be an array of methods of teaching children on how to deal with information. Data mining, data searching, data analysis, critically review of data. And, and, and that's what education is supposed to be promising to all of these kids, so that by the time they get to university, they can deal with their own information management and information management approaches. And in this instance, this is where our biggest problem is. We put them up in international benchmarks, and when they come in there, sometimes they fall short because they, you know, the construct is in a memory form and there is no expansion of associations, what it means, you know. Um, so also the structure of our language has lost its, uh, its essence at times, especially you can look at idioms, you can look at, uh, you know, your, your, your ways of speaking, that, that has been lost in the process. We are now into township languages and moreover people are beginning to say let's use, you know, your your WhatsApp language as the appropriate means of communication. But the point of the matter is really, what can we achieve within the context of a reading plan, taking into account all of these needs? And this is where our biggest need is. We have to come together, colleagues, to start talking about SUTU, production of SUTU teachers, teaching of SUTU in schools. We have to come together to start talking about Africans, you know, and as Mr. Jack was saying, including your Africans and English, we, we have a depth of, of talent and teachers in those spheres. Uh, this strategy is premised on this theory. Mother tongue education is the most effective strategy in building a successful foundation phase for the poor and the rural children of the Eastern Cape. And if you look at this, there's proven research and it's research based, there's no way that we, we, we cannot um, understand it. Then secondly, I should think uh, Nelson Mandela Institute at Forte came up with a formulation that was very interesting to me, the concept of educational knowledge project and its accountability to the main language stream in schools. You will find that 80% of our children speak Isikosa at home, but we subject them to a schooling system that starts them in English and then they get lost in the process. I was visiting a school, I was doing some work with Selex Foundation some years ago, 
and we were visiting a school um, in, in New Brighton where they were using English as, as, as language of teaching and learning in grade one, grade two, grade three. And you could get a sense that, you know, because it was fashionable that our kids must speak English, there was no real theory on knowledge acquisition, the role of language in knowledge acquisition, embedding certain skills, you know, at certain phase. So there was, so you will find that many of our schools make policy choices based on what parents perceive to be good. If your child is speaking English to you, that child is brilliant. And you could listen to many parents, you know, even in shops when they go with their kids. They don't speak a course. No, 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 boy, don't touch it, boy. Uh, you know? <laughs> then you begin, you begin to realize, you, you, you begin to realize that we, we are slaves. And we are slaves in a situation and a complex situation where children are supposed to understand structure and relations. And as a result of that, when then they call you to the school to say, hey, Umtanawako is not making the grades. The point of the matter is that language is very silly, but you know the battles that we fight on this language issue. Parents make a very, you know, interesting decision. They take their children into an English medium school in the middle of nowhere when they are not coping. They are told that the Umdanawako has repeated once, I don't know, repeat or start to so take the child uh, to a special school. Umdana is not fit for any special school, but the point of the matter is that the foundation is lost. And this is where we are. We're trying to align, as the department, the, the knowledge project with the language um, structure of children, particularly mother tongue. And this is what we'll be emphasizing in our discussion with all of you. There are two processes, MSC, that are very important, and this is where people must understand clearly. There is incremental introduction of African languages, which means by the time they get to grade nine, they must speak a language other than English or Afrikaans, which means in this case, Sotho or any other language. And then the second one is the concept of mother tongue-based education, which means providing teaching and learning in a mother tongue throughout the system. That is different from foundation phase, grade three, then grade four, they switch to English, you know. Mother tongue based education is exploring the concept of developing mother tongue as a language of instruction. In this case, we're trying to manage both terms of policy as we launch this reading strategy. In the first instance, we are emphasizing that between grades one and grade three, they must be able to read and write in their mother tongue. Because once you get to grade four, it has to do with the resource capacity of the state to provide that, especially teachers who are well-trained, you know. So it's going to be very important that we, we, we manage that transition between mother tongue in the foundation phase and the introduction of mother tongue-based education in grades four up to grade nine. The department did pilot it in Kofimvaba, where we were looking at Ingriba second, and where we were piloting mother tongue-based education at Ingriba. And it became very clear that there are four fundamental things that are very important. The first one is the resourcing of the project, because you need to invest massively on production of teachers, textbooks, and all of that. So it's going to be very important that we manage it with care, otherwise it's a very sensitive. Be that as it may, we don't put obstacles. We have to move. The first step is the most positive thing that we must undertake. Our attack as Eastern Cape is professional development of teachers. That's our main attack. And this must have an impact on the classroom practice which in turn must have an impact on learning outcomes and also then ultimately it must have an impact on teachers' beliefs and attitudes. Colleagues, if teachers don't believe in any program, it won't happen. So if teachers believe, it can happen. You know, I went to a primary school where it was almost fashionable to start speaking English. What am I doing, class? I am sitting on the table. What am I, I am sitting under the table. And, and you could sense that, you know, all teachers were obsessed that our children are top 
of the brand. And, and high, you know, higher primary schools, they were just grabbing us like peanuts, you know. It's a cup, it's a cup. Then you begin to feel that, no, 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 no. If teachers are into the idea, the school will run with it. And in this case, if we can invest in teacher development, that's why we are aligning our resources in the department around teacher development. This is where we need our social partners, particularly teacher unions. Uh, this is where we need uh, the relationship that we have with private funders that are coming in, especially the corporate. It's going to be very important that we share resources, we share strategies. Upola Gebekawa raises something, at how do you bring everybody under one house so that we don't have many projects or programs that are inconsequential? And Steve was talking about that, you know, when he was doing the meta-analysis. What makes an impact? And I should think for us, this is where it's important. Ulinda again knows uh, as the director for GET, this is where our fight is most of the time. Linda, how do we consolidate them under one roof? If they are about teacher development, let's put them under one roof. If they are about resources, materials, development, let's coordinate them around that arm. So this strategy has 12 pillars. And if you break them, it's almost three discernible strands that you need to work with. And that's going to be very important when you look at it. At the core, the launch of the strategy signifies, one, that we need to develop a common program on the teaching of reading across the Eastern Cape. In Isikosa, in Isisutu, uh, in Hoi, in Africans, in English, but we need to have a common program. What is the scientific methodology of, children, of teaching children to read and to read with meaning and comprehension by the time they pass grade three or by the time they reach age 10. That is the golden you know, objective of the strategy. By the time they leave grade 10, they must be able to read with meaning and comprehension. So where we are honing in is that is to support our schools in classroom practice, is to support them in resourcing their classrooms and also support them in managing remedial work. That is the core of the strategy. That's what is at the center. Where it's going to help us is to have a clear policy directive on institutionalization. Each school will have a school policy on reading, and that will be based on a provincial guideline where we ask all our schools to follow one timetable and where we'll be able to galvanize everybody around that, time, that timetable. Number two, there were no national reading norms for indigenous languages in South Africa. There were norms for English, Africans, and Germanic languages. Now DBE has worked out a framework on the norms for indigenous languages in primary schools. Uh, if you look at those, uh, when I'm talking about, it's beginning to give hope that we are going to look at all of these languages on par, which is going to be very useful and, and important. Last but not least is the impact analysis and impact assessment. This is where you know, uh, Stellenbosch, Fundawande were sharing with us because we want to get into that space uh, on what makes sense, what doesn't make sense in terms of this intervention. In this case, we only have AGRA, which is almost your national framework for assessing these children. But also there are other benchmarks, your SACMEC, your PERS, you know, all of these benchmarks. So we need to find a way just to make sure that we are singing from the same boat. Uh, Chair, just to say that this is the framework of our partnership. All of you, you are under this one roof. We are trying to allocate you as you come along. And if you're looking at the relationships that we are building up, whether it's Funda Wande, uh, it's Click Foundation, um, it's NACT, it's, it's all about various aspects that we are managing. But key and important, we want these kids to be able to share reading, uh, to, to, to do e reading independently, but also to do e reading as, as a group. These are the partnerships that are currently active in the department. We have the PSRIP, which is a program that we are working in collaboration with DPE and NACT. Then there's the teacher reading program, which is what we're doing with Funda Wande. And then there is the Maths Up program that we do also with UCT and Red Inc. 
There is public schools partnership Amajing, which is a separate project uh, at Amajing local, you know, authority Cosa Phonics program, which we do with the Batch Foundation. So all of these are now going to be brought together under this one broad theme called Eastern Cape Rating Plan 2030. So we'll be mobilizing everybody around this program. So, Chair, just to say that what we have been requesting uh, the Chief Directorate to do, Uma Mubastop, is to have a follow-up, uh, which is going to be the development of implementation plans that will also involve our partners. So everybody will, that will be participating in that framework will have a clear role to play in terms of teacher development, resourcing of teaching and reading, uh, the actual you know, teaching of reading in schools, the actual, um, you know, how you put together a reading corner, how you put together a classroom that is conducive to promotion of reading. But what will be important is the public participation in this campaign, particularly civil society organizations, churches, you know, because we want to involve everybody to be just behind this campaign. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Dre, uh, for the for for the outline of what should be happening from now onwards. Samandi, mandi tete, mandi tete simple simple nyana. We we need to ensure that it is a, some kind of a follow up. Uh, meeting with the key stakeholders and key role players just to follow up on this action plan, the practical action plan that says now that we are left with only uh, two months, October, November, and the year is gone, the academic year, in the remaining period, what is going to happen? And in this remaining period, how do we ensure that we prepare thoroughly for what is going to be happening in 2023? Flowing from all these things that was presented here, and how does it link with other programs that we are driving in the department? All the work that is done by various stakeholders, where do they fit in in the other programs that we are driving as a department? and also in terms of taking forward our, our targets that we have set for ourselves for this term and also up to 20, up to 2030. The other issue that I think is important to be dealt with in that follow-up session is now this missing part. I think we are beginning to tie up all the, the loose ends on literacy, we have this strategy now to drive it, uh, working with other stakeholders that are also doing numerous and all that. Uh, towards the end of this month or next month beginning, we intend to have an endeavor on maths and science and technology so that we deal with this problem, this elephant in the room where maths and science performance that is uh, below par. So immediately we get something out of that, would have a clear plan for math, science, and technology. But we'll be left with the biggest elephant, which is the early childhood development. I'm talking about zero to five. So that we follow in clear terms La research ka DPE, a tetango drive by five. 
And how do we make learners to thrive by five? And ready to get to grade one. As of now, only 47% of the kids between zero and five in South Africa are thriving by five. In the Eastern Cape, I think it's only 38% that is thriving by five. So we need a separate session altogether to map early childhood development interventions. In the research agents where by various stakeholders to say, you start with pregnancy, healthy pregnancy and healthy delivery, followed by nutrition, followed by, by stimulation, followed by language development, following by your, your numeracy and literacy uh, kind of cognition, cognitive development. And they, they, they get to be ready if manas was on to thrive at five. So that's the missing part. We must build on this progress that we have made today and just tie up those loose ends. Then in the Eastern Cape will be we'll, we'll have all the strategies now to deal with the with these elephants with these elephants that are remaining in the room. Uh, so when sitting in the caution, Pagu Budre, over a follow-up session with just with key role players will be, caught, will be convinced to tie up this work and come up with an action plan, clear action plan, uh, that will take this work uh, forward uh, along the, the lines of the strengths that were mentioned but other issues as well that were presented and raised in the form of questions and contributions. Uh, Honorable MC, I was trying to uh, uh, level the playing field uh, for you to close the session. Uh, over to you, MC. A big round of applause for the MC. No, no thanks, uh, SG. Um am sure I'm going to get my city and I'm going to go to the You could see even the participation is a bit diminishing. But however, we must have courage to make sure that we complete the work finish up the work that we intended to do. Once more, good afternoon to all of you. Um, I think uh, SG, I'm beginning to confirm now what has just been said uh, some decades back by the then President uh, Nelson that uh, when you climb a mountain, you only realize after you have climbed that mountain that, by the way, there are so many mountains that you still have to climb. I'm, 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 I'm raising this because we, when we were theorizing uh, conceptualizing, uh, consolidating the views around this strategy and begin to tease it uh, so that it becomes more pregnant in meaning in terms of the landscape um, of education in the province. We, we thought we have done all what was expected. But as we engage here, colleagues, I find it uh, that there is more to be done in terms of integration. And there is more to do in terms of ensuring that there is a sufficient uh, consensus on some strategic questions so that we can be able to 
move with speed when we have adopted a policy framework um, to work on, on it. It takes a courage uh, to understand and accept that by design policy is a contested terrain. Uh, it takes courage to understand that and accept it. That by design policy is a contested terrain. It's not a single one-sided view. There will always be a contest. Uh, it's comfortable when the house goes on. Can be so comfortable when the house goes on. Singa te singa bena nga kineyo onge na emunye na yolento yetu. It's comfortable you because of 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 the dynamics that are at play when you formulate a strategic policy um, like this one. I just wanted to thank um, not just the branch, uh, Brare, but the thinking tanker behind this strategy. Can I tell you a secret? This is the definition of the power relations in the society and in the continent in general. Once you talk language, culture, religion, and formulate a strategy on how to deal with it. Apuyakona uzau yaku power relations with society. Ufigi legengo gapilete yaku bi palelekona. Because in ngako zabana yoyo kala, indobana abantu that are used on the dominant language are going to find it difficult to accept the new entries. And are going to, to, to find it difficult to accept that it's not God's given that there is monopoly of language in societies. It's by design of human humankind. We are close to 100 years now, uh, SG. Sino mesi dispens wa majamani apa nga apa kumfula. But amongst the lessons that we we will have to learn around uh, the investments, the foreign direct investments, in Doba sometimes they usually don't compromise their language, culture, and traditions. The um, eraser can lend to Apa so that as you, as you, as you tease a, a practical, implementable plan, um, Chief Director and, and, and DTG, at the back of your mind, there is another mountain that we are going to have to climb very quicker. The, 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 the sign language, SG, is going to be a thorn in the flesh of the sector very soon. And uh, we, may, we may not take it serious now because we have not yet been cornered anywhere. But if you want to check the damage that has been caused by the absence of um, the content on how to resolve that unresolved issue around the, the sign language itself. Go back, get out of the set, and go back to other departments. That's why I always say, SG, lay department yoku tinga. I kwenye ndao tinga kuyo, kulap. Because each development of any nation depends on the strategic thinking of those that are in education. For example, si sheli ne case apa ya se efata for more than eight years inga koko yobula waka principal. Do you know the reason why? Because justice does not have people for sign language. O principal wa se efata si sheli ne case 
he enrolled eight years back. The, the family could not have a closure on that incident. Why? Because I'm saying the state capacity on sign language is questionable. Now, I'm then saying it's part of an ongoing Tara cleanup and a Tara ongoing evolution of the strategies that would have to put more flesh and blood on them and, and be patient with the change uh, because sometimes change is irritative, especially when you have a department that is aging. Especially when you have got a department that is aging, change itself is irritative. Because it's an some, 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 some reconfiguration in terms of the plans that are there. Um, the Afuna and Juibe Telela into a TSG in this pants. Let's thank all of you for successfully putting up a workable partnership. I, I can tell you there is no government that is going to succeed outside of partnerships now under the shrinking fiscals and the economy in the country. The country is hanging on a cliff now. So you need people that are thinking outside of the box. How do we consolidate um, partnerships? And how do we then value them and ensure that um, we, we don't mess up with the multi-term agreements that we have signed and MOUs that we have signed with number of stakeholders that are involved in various forms and shapes in the set. So I'm saying, now then that we have got this uh, plethora of, 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 of NGOs, um, institutions of higher learnings uh, that are also part of this uh, conceptualization and the plan itself. How do we sustain that momentum and ensure that we don't fail uh, each other? So it's going to be critical for all of us to make sure that we, we make sure that we don't, we, don't, we don't put our eyes off the ball. Yes, they are going to be competing uh, priorities. Um, as you are presenting here, uh, as they were presenting here in the acting, I can name about, hey, is Ara. Ziai Kumbul, but let debate is Goyo. Ileum Patis of Negapinde or Boya was a Goyo in the context of the mother tongue bilingual. And in essence, it means the country depends on your understanding and deafness on this question. So there is an additional silent phenomenon that is part of what you are engaging today, which is going to be an add additional responsibility over what you are agreeing now here. So Thanks, uh, everybody, and thanks for the, the, the effort that has been put. Um, and the ask is out in because the ask is out in the morning, because the ask is Where can we cut the cake uh, so that we can ensure that uh, this milestone does find uh, its rightful place um, in the broader agenda of government. The problem also, Yoba, once you don't do that, again, you blackmail Goba the policy champions, but without an implementation 
um, plan that is coherent. When you are in the city, the SG, the city, very few people in the country that were aware that in Sangu, Bubuche be better about Tingu. Up until 2019, when it was discovered that, by the way, Akuko need your bus, your combas go later. Snobuche be Tinape, Eastern Cape, Bubu in Sangu. But when you go to these national platforms, you tibana na bantu be funun lecturish and gungen sang bangayazi. Bafunun tata true, but I must in brief uh, on how to on how to make a productive hemp. But chinche nekam bangati cannabis ngok bati bona hemp so that you, you could understand them better. So I'm saying what we just needed to do, colleagues. Let's master the art and skill of what we have. That's my argument. Gone are the days where we must try to emulate things that are not going to work for us. Let's design a schooling system that is responsive to the crisis we have in the province. Let's design a schooling system that is able to make the sector a beacon of hope for, for the people of this province. Let's reconnect with the past, try to find answers that have not been there for quite some time, and answer one question. If the intellectuals in this country were produced here, what went wrong? What is it that we dropped the ball on in the past that needed now just us to, to revisit so that we can be able to, 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 to repurpose um, our institutions and find answers uh, for the country in general on a number of uh, issues that the country is confronted with. It is a fact, Ungaitata is a joke, it is a fact that once Eastern Cape catches the flu, there is going to be a problem. Once Eastern Cape is not clearer what must happen, then there is going to be a problem, I can tell you. Whether you talk about um, generally uh, in terms of the economics of the, of the country in general and also in terms of governance itself, yes, of course, we have got our own weaknesses and our, own, our strategic enemy as Eastern Cape is us. Um, it's no problem when uh, SG yourself hate in the province. Abona bantu ba i ngake Eastern Cape nga bantu ba sa Eastern Cape. Shambi ke imbali ya abo banga bantu ba impatient. Kwezinto ezinga fanele kanga. Ziteske lo impatience zale enye additional impatience. So bendi siti ke nga lo mazwi. Let's all go back to our respective um, workstations, try to dissect um, this strategy and say, from my own workplace, work, 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 workplace, what is gonna be our contribution in the broader scheme of things as outlined here? What is gonna be our contribution in the broader scheme of things? And how do we then make sure that everybody finds comfort over the overarching strategy of the department? Um, a dedicated team, a selection of SGUBA, Shambila group, a Latin, Ibi Kukuzel, Ikipinde, Itiban, and Gokales, Jongba. What are the immediate tasks? Uh, that we must, we must quickly um, deal with them and put them aside. Because this is need a project management style. That yesterday we're here, today we want to be here, and this matter is closed. That day we are starting here, and that week we want to be there, and that matter is closed. So that you don't create uh, anxiety on a policy discourse. Because ebe ke kwa kukunga, ukunga kaniseiki, abantu baza, babantu bata lwefani, abantu, banga banta bayo yika, inta banga yaziyo. 
So I'm, I'm then saying it's going to be important that we adopt an attitude of a project management style uh, of leadership so that we quickly zoom into immediate tasks, close them up, and find um, the medium and long-term plans on how to deal with some of these, um, some of these challenges that we're going to be confronted with. Yes, of course, we are going to battle, as, as this HOD was saying in the morning, part of the challenges of Nile and the infrastructure um, for, for a number of reasons. But, but Nile can't be made a barrier uh, such that we can't take an initiative. And the Langogotike and Salapansi SG, you better be a failure whilst present than to be an absent hero. You better be a failure whilst there than to be an absent hero. Because the problem, the problem, the problem, the because it means there is something happening. Because once you become a perfectionist, you have a problem of taking an initiative. So allow us to make mistakes so that we are able to grow, so that we can perfect the imperfections. You see? So that's why I'm saying, Let's, let's just hold each other's hand, find a way of making sure that the province is going to surpass this milestone. It's one of those, th it's one of those programs, Lee, that is going to make the province into, into a better pedestal. And uh, I've already seen, in terms of the media interest, um, they are going to tease you into pieces. Some of them are going to chop you into nothing. Uh, okay, you're wrong. Can you bring the right one? No, 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 I'm it's fine. Uh, maybe we have not arrived where you, th you thought we should be. Can you bring an alternative from, from the one that we're presenting? So we must adopt that attitude. We listen to people, engage them extensively, and try to, but avoid, avoid creating a, um, unnecessarily delays that may, may cause a damage into the broader scheme of things. As, I'm said, as I said earlier on, a policy by design is a contested terrain. Without schooling them the intentions, why this, why that, why not this, why not that, and what are the implications at the, at the, at the, at the, at the broader scheme of things? Thanks, uh, HOD. Uh, another big round of uh, applause for the MEC. Uh, uh, let me see, has got this approach of uh, making very profound statements as case when you think about, hey, am I not this uh, absent here? I wonder most this, this thing, this government work, is not understood by people who are not working in government. It's only understood by those who are working with us as partners who understand how hectic it is up. But those who have not tasted the public service, they think that we are just relaxed here. Now, at home, we are always asked in Dobana, you are not available for us. So, go so I'm not to choke. 
Uba kutuwa sisi absent fathers pindlini because we are all over. We are so committed to this work of the nation. And you forget that we have people that you must nurture up. <laughs> so, uh, interpretation, yes, a statement, is multi-pronged, MEC. As it touches again now. Thank you very much, MEC. Now, I've got a few announcements. Uh, Omis Kopman uh, requests that all the All the principals uh, as Koyo must just remain behind. We don't have boxes of nerves from any part. They read us. Two, I'm told that uh, there are going to be people who are going to say Ipex says the Kuni Mosongundola. Ah, 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 and the guys booning her. So other people must ensure that they get their gift packs. Uh, before they leave. And he has one of no petters on again, can you facilitate that so that maybe as people get out of the of the of the room, they get their yeah, now we are Uzay Hoya Umama U Umama U U John Paul and Kangala Lene, Kamala Gwapalin, Bij Bali. Uh, so, the third issue is just to convey our sincere, uh, insincere appreciation uh, and a word of thanks to Funda Wand for partnering with the department uh, to launch land and also support us with the funding and a number of other things that have made this thing uh, to be what it is today. I also want to thank all other partners for their role that they've played and the role that they are continuing to play in the province. It was indeed an eye-opener to get a sense of over oh, this, this, this a lot that is happening, including employment. Uh, is an is an activist is a cultural activist he used to to participate we unit a cultural society then so here going to be adam futano and christmas is we were together at unitra and, and now he, he, she was saying that in the province, they have employed uh, MEC 289 uh, facilitators, ordinary people that are working with communities, and early childhood development. And we don't know, we, we, we are not told about these things that are happening in the province. So I think we need really to firm up in the coordination, MEC Tetangai, the integration so that we have a report of what is happening. And the Premier is always raising this issue. But I come to report on So I think we must be able to report to Zagwa Education Partnerships and what is happening and the impact as now. So I just wanted to thank all the partners and everybody that is gathered here today. Indeed, this was a great session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, districts. They asked one as near austerity measures, eh, to, but you tried your level best to be here. Uh, would have wanted to bring more principals. But in Nagi, I know a big person in Nagi. A hundred rand, if an yellow fit is best, then a lag of hundred rand. Otherwise, we would have expanded this to other people. When we are in the finances, okay, we'll be able to expand these things even to other people to benefit. But I think the follow-up session will outline how we're going to take the strategy now to districts and to CMCs and to, and to schools. Once again, thank you very much uh, 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 to everybody and especially the organizing team. Uh, uh, 
your organization, your level of organization was at another level. I can see what I can safely say that the the setting, the setup is the same as the setup that we experience by if it's cool. Kula session ATPE, next new partners. It was like this. So, see, level in this 10 Cape. So, a big round of applause for those abilities. Mam Nungwa, see, Valen and Jemma, my big Vulong of Tandas. Ogane, Upum Fundi, so fetch. A cousin, cousin. Oh, good to have you born in Chile. Um, kill. Honorable MC, Honorable Chairperson, HOD, thank you so much. Colleagues, let's just bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we just give you praise. We give you all the honor and adoration for this great work that has been done. We know, oh God, we, you, we are your creation. We know, Father God, that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes directly from your strength comes directly from you. So therefore, Father God, we thank you. We give you all the adoration this evening, Father God, as we wrap up this session. We pray, Father God, that you go with us, go before us, Almighty God, and, you know, take out every single um, blockages, every stumbling blocks in front of us. So, Father God, as we move with this strategy, Father God, we want you to be present all the time. We want to feel your presence as it every, all the time as we implement this strategy. We pray this in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, H.O.T. Uh, and go smam ngwanange tent one to go.